Go check out our Fundamentals of Animation and Blender course on cgcookie.com. Or if annual membership isn't your thing, you can find the course as a standalone product on the Blender market. Links are in the description below. So you might be wondering, what's the big deal? What's the point of learning about normals? Well, the big deal is this right here. This is a single polygon object, and yet it's got so much micro detail that it looks like an ocean. Understanding normals is actually a really important part of being a 3D artist because it's a powerful tool you can use to create really cool stuff. So let's break it down and talk about what's going on and how Blender makes this happen. Okay, so I've got this sort of sample scene set up, and I'm gonna use this to uh, explain normals and talk about them because there's some really good ways of doing it visually so you can really understand what's going on. So let's jump into it. What is a normal? Well, a normal is the direction that a face is pointing. So you can see here, I've got this, uh, this single plane and I've got normals turned on. Now you can visualize normals yourself uh, in Blender by heading up here to the top when you're in edit mode. So if you go into edit mode, you go up here to the top and into the drop down here with the, uh, the overlays come all the way down to the bottom and right down here in normals there's this button you can turn this on and off you can change the length of the normal you can see just to make it really clear to see and it's going to point in the direction that the normal is facing so you always have a normal uh for a face and it's it represents the the direction that that face points so you can see this one's pointing directly up now i've put a special shader on this uh object right here you can see i've got the texture coordinate node and i've got the normal uh, which is you know the information about which direction the, the faces are pointing and I'm just feeding that directly into the material output surface So this is not you know being affected by lights or anything This is just purely showing us the raw color data for the normal and why does it show up as blue? Well right here is the spreadsheet um, and the spreadsheet gives us of course um, Numbers that help us to evaluate what's going on with our models and stuff It shows us all the the details and stuff and I've got it set to face mode here And you can see we've got normal as a column and we've got three numbers here. We've got zero zero and one so now what this is telling us is this represents X, Y, and Z, right? Or X, Y, and Z, depending on where you are on the planet. So we know this face is only pointing straight up. That's why we've got a one here in the Z coordinate. There's zeros in the others because it's not pointing in any of those directions. If I was to take this and to rotate it, let's say a little bit on the X, just a touch, you could see these numbers start to change because now we're pointing a little bit on the Y and a little bit uh, less on the, the Z. So it's got this angle. Now what's also changed is you'll notice the color has changed. And the reason for that is because Blender's taking this normal information and it's reinterpreting it as red, green, and blue. And that's why we're getting these colors. So pure blue is when you've got zero, zero, one, and it's just pointing straight up. And that's how you get that pure blue color. So naturally, if we head over to another object like this cube that I have here, you can see that with the same shader applied to it, we get these different colors. We get green here for the Y, we've got um, red on the X, blue at the top, and then we've got black on these other sides. So let's talk about what's happening here. So we can see that uh, the green face is pointing purely in the Y direction. And so that's why we get this green color, same with the red and the blue. The reason why these are going to black is because these are actually negative values. So if you look at the top and bottom, for example, we've got the blue here, which is pointing up. So it's zero, zero, one. Uh, we could probably find this face if I select it and rotate it a bit. We'll see what, what changes here. So yeah, we can figure out here, this was the right one. So zero, zero, one. So it's not pointing anywhere on the X, anywhere on the Y, but it's just pointing straight up. So this is the face we're looking at here. But if you look at the opposite face, which is down here, this will be zero, zero, negative one. So it's the second uh, row here in the, the spreadsheet. So negative one, if you pop that in as a color, it's gonna come out as black, right? Because zero is black and everything below zero is just gonna appear black if it's a color. So that's why we're not getting any um, colors for these sides. These are all the negatives. So pointing in the negative direction or pointing in the positive direction. You'll notice as well that the numbers never go above one. A normal is always represented in a scale of negative one to one. And that can be really valuable information later on when you're doing more advanced stuff, like with geometry nodes, for example, if you know that a normal is always going to be within a range of negative one to one. So what's the point? Why are normals a, a good idea to know about? Why should you understand this? Well, let's have a look at an example. Um, I'll just move past, we've got a sphere here. You can see all the different color variations that you get from normals from all the different you know directions pointing. Um, and you can see it dips into black when it goes into the negatives down here. But let's talk about what, what normals do for us in terms of uh, 3D rendering. So I've got this little sphere here and I've created this kind of complicated little shader just so I can demonstrate uh, how this works. So let me go ahead and I'll turn off this bump and we'll just have a look at this. This is just a standard shader uh, with uh, shade flat turned on so it's we could see each face. And if we, was to, if we were to switch this just to the normal view mode, I could just uh, switch this like this. 
And now we're looking at the colors representing the number values, right, for the directions that every normal, every face is pointing. Right now we've got pretty limited geometry on this thing. There's not a lot of geometry on this, this sphere. You can see every single face, it's, you know, pretty simple. But if I wanted to make it more complex, often what I do is in a shader, I'll use something called a bump node, this right here. And usually what we do is we feed in some kind of procedural noise into a bump node and it creates some texture on the object, whatever it is. Now, what's happening under the hood with that, if we have a look at what this looks like, if we turn on uh, the normals again, so we're just looking at the normals, let me turn on this bump node, okay? And we'll see how it changes these normals. So I'm gonna slowly turn this up. And you see, we start to get this new color information on the normal channel. So have a look at that. It's, it's actually changing it quite a lot and way more than just you know what direction every face is pointing. We now have subtleties in between the faces. So the faces are still pointing in the same direction as they were before, but now this extra information is kind of layered on top. And when you feed a noise texture into a bump node, what you're doing is you're basically giving Blender a height map. So let's have a look at what a height map looks like real quick. So I'll just um, I'll unplug all this stuff here. Now it's very subtle. It's a little hard to see because uh, there's not a lot of contrast in this height map. But this Veroni texture is creating white and black values. It's just a straight up uh, noise generator and it just creates white and black values. If I was to put a color ramp on this, you could see this a little bit clearer if I crank the contrast. There we go. So you can see a little bit better what that noise actually looks like. So this white and black noise, Blender takes it and it uses it to interpret it into a height map. So height map is uh, wherever you've got the number, you know, one and above, like positive numbers, it views that as being really high. Wherever you have, you know, zero and, and below negative numbers, it views it as really low. So it takes the dark points in this uh, height map and it converts them into basically virtual geometry. So what do I mean by that? Altering the normals so that the dark places in that height map become low areas on the surface and the bright spots on the height map become high areas on the surface. And that's how you get a bump map, which is basically simulating more geometry than you really have. We don't have a lot of geometry. We can't create this detailed of a surface, but by changing the normals, we're then allowing Blender to basically learn how to, how to light this object as if it had all this extra geometry, creating these different normals for the different directions of the faces. So watch this, if I turn on uh, the shader itself, and you can see we get this nice slimy look. So you can see the way the normal is changing the way the lighting is behaving. So uh, Blender is now rendering this sphere as if it's got these, these you know, sort of ridges and valleys from the bump map. And you can see that is affecting the, the reflection on the surface and the specular and the way it's shining, it makes it kind of looks like it's got this slimy, slimy surface um, and a lot more geometry than it actually has. You know, it's not that dense of an object. Now we still see the faceted faces and that's because we still are shading this um, flat. So it's just taking the pure normal direction of each face and it's just rendering that. And then on top of it, it's layering in this extra information that we're doing to change the normal with the bump map so that it alters the way the light uh, affects these things. Now, if you wanted to smooth this out completely, of course you would right click and shade smooth. Let's have a look at what that looks like um, when you're looking at it in just the normal view. So let me turn this back to normals and I'll turn off the, the bumps. We can really focus on what this looks like. So whenever you right click and shade smooth on an object, you can see what happens. It basically smooths out the normals. It averages the values. So it takes you know two faces, one pointing this way, one pointing that way, and it creates a color gradient between those two. And that's how you get this nice smooth look and that's how you get uh, rendering where Blender basically takes uh, an object that has a lot of faces that are really clearly, you know, we don't have a lot of geometry. If we look at the, you know, we can see all that geometry there. If we look at the, uh, the wireframe mode, it's obviously not a smooth surface. It's got these, you know, hard edges along the outside. But by telling it to average all the normals, you get this nice smoothed out look and Blender knows how to render this object. So normals are really, really powerful for altering the way Blender uh, renders objects and materials irrespective of how much geometry you have. So when you change the normal channel, you're changing the way Blender renders an object. That's really key to understand. So when I turn the bump map back on, now we've got this really detailed object that looks really fantastic. And you know, if we were to actually model this and use actual geometry to make this same look, this would be such a dense object, it would make your computer run really slowly. So thankfully with normals, it holds up really well. You only ever have these fall apart when you get right up close, so close that you can see that this texture doesn't actually play out along the edges of an object, 
but that's uh, that's usually a pretty rare uh, use case scenario. Most times you're you know far away from an object and this is all you need. So another great example is to take something like a plane. It's just a single polygon, very, very flat. You can see our normal here for this 001. It's very straightforward. It's not a lot going on here in terms of you know detail and geometry. If I create a new material for this guy, come over here and create a bump node, which is the special node that creates these normals from height maps. Um, it can also create them from normals. So if you have like a, a texture file that you're bringing in that's a bump map that someone's made, you would plug the, the normal, the output of that into the normal here, and you could plug this into the normal on your principled BSDF shader uh, right here, and that's how this, this works. So we could take this bump now, we can plug it into the normal, and then we can come over here and we can create uh, some kind of texture. So let's grab a, um, let's grab a noise texture. And we'll take the factor, which is the uh, black and white output of this thing. You can also take the color, which is the RGB, but it disregards color. So it basically will convert it into the same as whatever the factor is. So um, plug that into here. And now we've got noise into our bump. And then so we can see it, I'm gonna turn down my roughness. That'll make this surface really uh, reflective. And there we go. Now you can see we've got this very cool reflective surface. And now we can take the scale up and maybe the detail a little bit. Um, and maybe darken it so we can see it even more. Give it a little bit of a blue color, why not? And then we can come over here to our noise texture, turn it into a 4D, so we've got the extra value of W right here. And then what I can do is I can just add in a little driver to this, um, or animate this value. Um, I'll do the, the driver, I'll show you the driver, you just go um, a pound, type frame. This will, this is like shorthand in Blender for grabbing some kind of variable and frame is a built-in variable for what the frame number is that you're on in your timeline. So we could do frame multiplied by 0 0.001, some really small numbers. So now if I play on my timeline, you see I'm gonna get this nice rippling effect, this water. So again, this is all coming from a single plane, a single polygon, there's one polygon here. And yet that one polygon is able to have this much detail. So back to our ocean example, you can see uh, when I plug in the bump um, instead of the principal BS, so I plug the normal of the bump straight into the surface, the material output, we see what the normal actually looks like. And all of this is the generated information that's coming from our bump node and our noise texture. And so what's happening is Blender is looking at this and going, okay, there's a light ray comes and it, when it hits the surface of this polygon, it actually doesn't look at the polygons normally. It looks at how the polygons normal is affected by uh, this, this system that we have set up on it. So it says like, okay, it looks at this like in this, this blue is a bit of a lighter blue. So we know from earlier, that means that instead of pointing straight up, it's pointing a little bit up and probably a little bit on the Y or maybe a little bit on the X too. So it's a direction. The same with the purple, this is pointing more in the red direction. So a little bit more in the positive X. So it's looking at that going, oh, okay. So this light ray is hitting a surface that's pointing in this direction. So that means I need to give it a little bit of shadowing for this and a little bit of a specular highlight for this because this is where the light source is. And I'll reflect the light source here, but as it falls off, it's gonna fall off into this direction and it's gonna change its shape. And so it's able to then calculate what does that render need to look like. Hope you found this tutorial really helpful. Please hit that like button if you did and leave us a comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. We've got a ton of amazing stuff over there for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later.